In this video, we are now looking into angles on a Cartesian plane. And um, as I said, these problems, they will typically tell you, do not use a calculator and all that. We want to explore the meaning of that. What does it mean not to use a calculator? Now, we are given a condition here, if, that's how we know it's a condition. If 13 sine theta is equal to minus five, and theta has, is between 90 degrees and 270. Find the values for sine theta plus cos theta, tan squared theta, sine squared theta plus cos squared theta. Okay, so we don't have to worry about finding the actual angle. We just have to find these values. And you will find questions like this now and then. Uh, of course, in your test exams, you are bound to have them. And this is one of those, um, I should say, uh, probably level three or level four question. Um, yeah, now we established previously in our previous discussion that all the ratios are positive in the first quadrant, in the second quadrant only sine and its reciprocal, in the third quadrant only tan and its reciprocal, finally in the fourth quadrant only the cosine and its reciprocal. Having said that, it now becomes really important to know exactly where these conditions are on the Cartesian plane or where are they fulfill, fulfilled uh, or satisfied on the Cartesian plane. So we must first actually write this thing here in a standard form, uh, which I believe you know, it's gonna give us, I'm gonna put it somewhere here, sine theta, um, is equal to minus five over 13. Now we know that sine is y over r and the hypotenuse is never negative. So it is y that has got to be negative. So that gives us a clue. Y is negative on the second and the fourth quadrant. So we now have an idea where the triangle is. This second restriction now tells us exactly where the triangle should be. We can't have a triangle in two quadrants, we must have it in one quadrant. So it says between 90 and 270, 90 and 270, there's 90, here is 270. So it's one of these two quadrants, but because we have already sticked this one, that means it has to be that quadrant. And so we go ahead and plot our triangle. So that's gonna be my sketch and pay attention to how I actually sketch my triangle and how I put my, uh, where I put rather my 90 degree, my 90 degree angle, I told you, it should always be adjacent to the X axis and not the Y axis. If you find it on the Y axis, you know something has gone terribly wrong. And my theta will actually be somewhere here. And actually this is not the actual angle, it's just a reference angle, as I said. In this case, we don't really have to worry much about the size because we don't have to find the size of the angle. Now, having that been, uh, been said, we now know this side is gonna be minus five because that's where minus y is. And this side is gonna be 13. And this side here is x. We don't know the value of theta. So the best and the shortcut to use to know the value of X is not to use any of the trick ratios, but to use Pythagoras because we're in a right angle triangle. So we're gonna go ahead and write it here. X squared plus Y squared is R squared. This is X squared plus negative five squared, which is 13 squared. Now this is 25 and that is 169. And therefore X squared will be 169 minus 25. This should give us something like 144. So to find X squared, we take square roots both sides. And so therefore X is plus minus 12. Now the question is what do we take between 12 and minus 12. Looking at the position of x there, minus 12 makes sense. So 
we take that. Finally, we can now get an expression for sine theta plus cos theta. We know already that sine theta uh, is minus five over 13. And so what is cos theta in this case? Cos theta is adjacent, which is minus 12, and the hypotenuse remains 13. So this whole thing here, you can punch this right away in your calculator is minus 17 over 13. That's the value of sine theta plus cos theta. Tan squared theta, remember I told you that tan squared is essentially tan theta, okay, all squared. So that's what, that's the principle we're going to apply. We must first find tan theta. What is tan theta here? Tan theta is opposite over adjacent. So uh, that is actually opposite is minus five. Um, excuse me, why did I say that? <laughs> yep, yeah, you know fatigue is now kicking in, right? Is actually tan socatois. Yeah, you see now. I remember because I've been doing this thing for many years. You probably needed to start by writing your socatois first. <clears throat> so is opposite over adjacent. So opposite is minus five. Okay, adjacent is minus 12. So that means tan squared, it means we must square everything. So this should be 25 over 144. I don't think that can be simplified any further because the only highest common factor that between those two is one. Finally, sine squared plus cos squared by theta, we can just take what is up there and uh, square it. So we have an expression for this already. Um, this is gonna be 12 um, over 13 all squared. So some basic algebra. Uh, this is going to be actually 25 plus um, 144 all over uh, 169. And this is going to be actually one or uh, 169 over 169, which is one. This is what we call a square identity. And I thought I should throw it in so that you will be aware of this important result in trigonometry. So in trigonometry, we know the following that from this nice little exercise, sine squared theta plus cos squared theta will always be one. Yes, this is true. We will look at the proof of this later on as we uh, become more firm in this talk of trigonometry. Fellas, I'll leave it here. We are only left at this point with the discussion of negative angles. When we have discussed negative angles, we will then probably look at special angles. After special angles, we will then look at the trigonometric functions. So negative angles, special angles, and then uh, functions, trig functions, okay? Trig functions. These are the three topics that we are left, or sections rather, that we are left with, and then we would have completed the talk on trigonometry. Thanks for watching. Cheers.